Today I want to explore a little bit with you what it means for us to be blessed. What is a blessing? How does someone receive a blessing? When you are blessed, what are the results of receiving that blessing? Worldly perceptions are pretty clear. In fact, I think sometimes those worldly perceptions, they kind of even infiltrate into our own lives. Worldly perception of being blessed means that we are rich in position and prestige. We have the world at our fingertips and we can have what we want. We can go after our own desires. Our lives are never darkened by suffering or sorrow. You get what you want even in your own emotional life. You feel happy about things and confident. Your confidence is not swayed, for you rise above the masses. And the masses look upon you and see you as some, someone who is good, someone who can be a good leader, a good role model. You are someone who lives by your own standard. And not only do you live by your own standard, but you set the standard for the other people around you. You're able to make your will be done, sometimes without regard for the needs or desires of other people. You live by your own standard of righteousness. In fact, you are self-righteous. You look at your life and you see your life as important and pure and holy simply because of the way you live it and the opportunities that you have. And people adore you wherever you go. The masses, they serve and obey you. I think in a lot of ways, these worldly perceptions of what it means to be blessed, they are things that we see out in our community, in our nation, in our world, and in our own lives. God's expectations and His Beatitudes are very high. In fact, they are so high, they are unattainable in our sinful context. They are so outside of our perceptions as human beings living in a sinful world about what a blessing is, we can't even figure out the context of the true blessing that God wants to give. I can't create the prerequisite for what it means to receive God's blessing and what God has to give as His gifts. Shortly after our gospel text for today, Jesus says these words in Matthew 5, 17. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. And here's a little hint that our Lord Jesus is the one who fulfills all things. He fulfills the law for you and on your be behalf. So we learn. We learn from our text. What does it mean to be blessed? Well, we receive the word of God. And Jesus says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. What does it mean to be poor in spirit? To be poor in spirit is to recognize who the creator is and that you are the creator. To know that you are not God. God is God and you are not. You are not the one who is in control, who is in charge. God is. You are poor. God is the one who is rich and has all things to give from his hand. And so God's word goes out. And you, his child, receive the blessing. And you receive a poor spirit. Next, Jesus teaches that when you receive God's blessing, you also mourn. And those who mourn are going to be comforted. You are comforted. But does this mean that anyone who cries a tear has this blessing? A lot of people, in fact, most people that I know of, when they experience someone who dies in their life, they weep or they cry. 
But this beatitude, it simply is a reality that we as God's people who have received his word, not just cry because we've lost someone in our lives, but we cry because we know what caused that death. Our sin. Your sin and mine. Sin is what we really mourn. The, the beginning of death is our sin. And that's what we mourn in our lives. As Christian people who receive God's blessing, God's word, we repent, we confess our sins. This is a part of the mourning in which we exist as God's people. We mourn. We mourn sin and death. What does God do? God comes to you as you are mourning, as you confess, repent of your sin, and what does He do? He lifts you up. He says, I forgive you all of your sins. He tells you, I have defeated sin, death, and the devil in your life and in the life of all who believe, who have received His blessing. And there are no more tears. When God's word goes out and you are blessed, Jesus says, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. What does it mean to be meek? That when God's word goes out and reforms and reshapes our lives, we are humble. I am not better than any other person in this world, and you are not better than any other person in this world. We are all the same. We all have the same need. We all have the same need for Jesus to come to us and to bring us out of the darkness and to give us light. And we're all in the same boat. We're in it together. No matter what, we're in it together. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. To inherit the earth is simply an idiom to live in paradise, to live in that place that God has made for you and for me, that he has gone back to prepare a place for us. God's word goes out. He helps us realize that we're all <coughs> valued by God. We're all in need of his gift that he won for us on the cross. God's word goes out. We are blessed. You are blessed. And Jesus says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. As Christians who have received the blessing, God's word spoken for you, we realize our need. We look at our lives and we look at the world around us and we say, there is no righteousness. We want it though. We hunger for it. We thirst for it. Because Jesus has come and given us his word. This becomes the desire of our heart. That Jesus would give us a context of righteousness and holiness. And you know what he does? He satisfies it. He satisfies it by giving to you his righteousness. And taking from you your unrighteousness. He satisfies you as he comes to you in his word and gives you blessing. God's word goes out and he, you are blessed and with that blessing Jesus says, blessed are the merciful for they shall receive mercy. And this is a wonderful gift that God's word goes out and he reforms and reshapes our lives. And he gives us his spirit and by that spirit we are given to use our hands and our feet to share our lives with other people and to relieve others in their suffering. To help them to bear their burden, to share mercy. God's word changes us. So we no longer do acts of mercy because, well, I want to feel good about myself. Or we no longer do acts of mercy because, well, I want to go to heaven. It's just because 
Our lives are changed. Jesus has come to us. And we do good works with our hands, with our feet, to serve others. You know, we need God's word for that. We don't do that on our own. God's word goes out. He gives us his blessing. And he changes our lives. God's word goes out and he says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And how do we have a pure heart? You know, we often in the offertory sing, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. And you know what God's word does? When it goes out to you in your life, when Jesus blesses you, you know what his blessing gives? A clean heart, a pure heart, a holy heart. You didn't do it for yourself. Jesus gives it to you. And you, because of your holiness, the holiness that you have received in Christ, you will see God, just like Job says in Job 19. I want to see God. I want to see him with my own eyes, my very own eyes. God's word goes out, and God blesses you, and with that blessing, you are made to be now a peacemaker. You are someone who is given to bring peace into other people's lives. How does that work? With God's blessing, it works by us sharing Jesus. When I close this sermon, I often say, The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That's the peace. How do people receive that peace? By God's people. By Jesus' people. By the Father's children going out into their lives and sharing Jesus. Sharing the word of God. Sharing the blessing that you have received so that others can know him and have his peace. You are the children of God. You are blessed. <coughs> Jesus says, blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. That one's a hard one. Blessed? Are the persecuted? Persecution is not something that we usually associate with blessing, but when God's word goes out, when God gives his blessing, you can be certain that there will come some form of persecution in your life, whether it be from your co-workers who might not believe in Jesus and maybe they make a little bit of fun at your faith, or maybe it's in your family even and it makes it hard and challenging and difficult and you're persecuted. Maybe you look across the ocean and you see someone who is actually killed because they believe in Jesus. Why are they killed? Because Jesus has blessed them with his word. They're killed because they believe. You know, they are killed along with a lot of other people in history who have been killed for the faith. Bless. God's word goes out. God's people are blessed, and the result very well may be persecution and even death. But you know, Christ has defeated death, and the kingdom of God belongs to you. So what does it mean to be happy or blessed? It's not so simple as we think from the context and the footing of our sinful nature, to be poor in spirit, to know who God is and who we are before God, to repent of our sin, to be humble and realize we're all in the same boat, to want and to crave righteousness and holiness and to share mercy and, and love with the people that are around us, to be pure in heart from the voice of God, to forgive, to be peacemakers ourselves, to be persecuted in the world. This is counterculture. This is counter the world. This is counter even our own self. John 17, 14 says, I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, 
just as I am not of the world. We are in the world, but not of it. Sometimes we still get confused about what is good. That is because we sin. And in this life, we do turn things around sometimes, but God's word still goes out, and he still gives his blessing, and he still gives you life. True life is with the Lord. Because in true life, we live not by sight, but we live by faith. Under the grace that Jesus has provided, we live under his blessing as he gives us his word. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Please stand.